So, chapters 4, 5, 6, yes, 4, 5, and 6. Um, so we continue to sort of, not sort of, literally alternate between um, having sort of our world or our society, the society of Euras, the, the proprietarian capitalist society, um, explored through the eyes of this anarchist alien, and then I'll alternatively going sort of back uh, in the timeline to um, explore the anarchist world um, through sort of the, the history the, of, of the life of, of Shevek. So chapter four, we go back to when he's uh, sort of in his early 20s. He gets his first posting at this university, um, and we get to see how sort of the beginnings of um, some of the issues he sees with his own society. Um, so like in his world there is no privacy. The only time privacy exists is sort of as a punishment. Um, if you're put off by yourself it's because you did something wrong and people are sort of fed up with you and don't want to be around you. Um, but at the university he's given his own room which sh strikes him very strangely and really upsets him. Um, but he eventually gets used to it. Um, he sort of s s um, rationalizes it in his mind that he needs this place to s to work and study alone without bothering people, without people bothering him. So that kind of benefits of that outweigh the negatives of being cut off and alone. In, in his society. Um, and he also meets with uh, this guy, Sabul, who is sort of his mentor or his teacher. Um, and Sabul gets um, Shevek to learn Iotic, which is the language of Uras. Uras? The other planet. Um, we find out that there is they they do communicate academically, intellectually with each other, sharing ideas, and it comes to light that the Sabul, who has sort of a he does have sort of a a higher up position in the in the university, which uh, there shouldn't be hierarchies in in an anarchist society. But anyways, he has this position because the works he's published aren't his own original ideas, but are pretty much stolen translations of Eurasti um, works. So that kind of rubs Shivak the wrong way, and sort of the first ideas and, and arguments and theories that Shivak comes up with get translated and shared with the Euras and the people, and um, eventually a book gets published, and it's not in Shivak. It's in Shivak's name, but it's also Shivak's name is second. Um, and Sabul takes sort of the first um, position of authorship, and so the, the whole thing just feels very strange to poor um, Shivak. And he just it's it's a very different world than what he grew up with at this at this university in the capital city. Um, so then we jump forward in time to the present and back to Urast Ur Ur in chapter 6 where uh, he Shvek sort of given a teaching position and a few courses and he's sort of getting very comfortable living his life at this uh, capitalist Proprietarian university, um, but he's still feeling kind of weird about it. Um, and at one point, one of the other professors, I think, or it's a politician. Um, regardless, it's one that's not from this sort of nation state that they're currently in, but from a different nation state. One that's more authoritarian and really strict on censorship, but one that is socialist in nature, so sort of thinking like 
modern day People's Republic of China. Um, and they meet in the library and he tells Shivek like, my room's bugged, your room's bugged, like this is all a big political game. They're using you, you've sort of been bought and sold um, to get your theory of faster than light whatever. Um, and tries to explain sort of the, the political mire that Shivek's in and he has no idea. He, um, and he explains to Shivek that Shivek sort of s sees people, but he doesn't understand the, the big uh, shadowy governments and groups behind the people because they're s just so foreign to his world. Um, yeah, and after the, like the day after this guy explains this to him, this guy gets recalled back to his back to his country by his government, like he's gone. Um, and then um, at the end of the chapter, he is it then that um, yeah he gets um, uh, one of these sort of more middle class people invites him back to his house for the weekend to, to have dinner or just visit or whatever so he goes out to this sort of like a country house and I say middle class the guy still has a servant but this guy's grandfather I think was like a general laborer and the guy's sort of really proud about that um, and this is like the, the first time Shevek gets to meet another woman or a sorry a woman and children on on Uras. Um and yeah he gets to have a whole conversation with the family about stuff and he he really enjoys that but you can tell how uncomfortable the family feels about some of the stuff he says and that they you sort of get hints that they have issues with their own society as well um, anyways that's that chapter. Then chapter six, we jump back to again. He's in his early twenties. He's at this university, um, and he meets with, uh, or he bumps into, or he's, he's sort of like losing the will to, well, literally to live, but also to work on this, the, these physics problems that he's had. Um, Every time he's been trying to write letters to people in Uras, they get denied and blocked. He tries to teach courses on this new physics he has, but they won't let him. Um, he, he like everything he's doing is getting blocked by the um, the sort of council or the, the 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 not the heads of the university, but he's he's learning that there there is a sort of a not a shadowy government, but there is an administrative form of government on this on this planet. This this which is supposed to be anarchist, and you're supposed to be able to do. You're supposed to have the freedom to do whatever you want. But he's whether it's by Sabul, his mentor, who just wants to steal his ideas. He, he he's finding that at every at every turn there's something blocking him. So he sort of gives up on his original thinking and acquiesces to the community and begins doing basic regular work and that's when things start going better for him but he still feels useless and unfulfilled um, and he bumps into a friend Badap who was from his childhood but he doesn't he didn't remember at first but anyways they spend some time together they spend the night together um, just as friends, um, just like utilitarian. It's cold. We only have one bed, so we're gonna sleep together. But they, um, um, Bidap explains all this to him. He's like, "Yeah, we're not supposed to have government, but we obviously have government." Uh, and he explains that one of their other friends, Tyrion, from their childhood, has been sort of put in an asylum. They're like. Shivak's like, no one's put in asylums where it's a voluntary thing and he explains how Shivak or how Tyrion had sort of 
ideas and that didn't conform with the community or whatever and so he kept getting job postings to manual labor and stuff that wasn't in his sort of expertise I'd like Tyrion had so much more potential but they, they kept get, getting placed in ma manual labor jobs and he'd quit them and then get placed in another one and then quit them and then, um, like you have the freedom to, to do that sort of thing but if you're continually quitting your work it's sort of you, you look down upon as someone who's not contributing to society and you know, and um, like he meets another guy, a musician, who is sort of the same thing. He's like this super genius musician, but he's only getting manual labor work because his sort of ideas and his music aren't are too sort of out there for for this for this community. Um, so he learns this from Bedap, especially, who's sort of explaining like, you know, Sabool is pretty much a politician. He's not technically part of the administrative group that changes every four years at the university so that there can't be a hierarchy and, and a political organization but there still is sort of a shadow government that's running things and how individuality is, is punished now and Odo's teachings are being taken as law which is like oxymoronic because it's is that a word oxymoronic? I mean, her whole thing was against laws, but now sort of Odonianism is being treated as law. And these, Shivek sort of comes to an understanding of all the issues his current society, which is supposed to be an uh, anarchist paradise, has. Um, yeah. And there's sort of a neat, th a neat thing about about sex that. I thought it was neat in, in their society where um, like after spending that first night together Badap and him sit down and they have a conversation sort of about you know should we couple up and like um, spend a few nights together like sexually um, and it's like well Shivek's heterosexual and but um, Badap's homosexual but then Shivek's like well you know Badap's a really good friend of mine I want to be closer to him so you know I'll I'll, I'll sleep with him for, for for like a week. So they sp like spend a week together and then and then not break up, but then go back to living in in, in separate home, uh, separate residences. And it says that like that week really helped them get closer together and bond, which I thought was neat. Um, so Shivek's sort of having all these issues. He's questioning things. Um, and at the end of this chapter, he meets with. Takfer, who was another one that's from his childhood, but he never really recognized her at first, but she's been in the city for a couple of years. Um, and they have some conversations about sort of what they want. And they're like, should we have sex together? And they're, they're both kind of like, I don't really want that now. It's, you know, it's not, it's not as fulfilling as it was when we were kids. Um, they're trying to figure out what they want, and Takfer is like, she wants a partnership, sort of a lifetime partnership, body and soul sort of sort of thing, and then this sort of revitalizes Shivek, and he's like, I never thought of that, this is like a great idea, whatever, and they sort of get married, as it were, um, which involves going to someone's house where she keeps sort of the re records of um, double rooms in like a closet so that her kids can't get at them. She gets them down and gets her to, them to sign like so that they're going to live at this sort of two person accommodation and then they move in together and that's sort of the ritual. The, there is no ritual. Or I guess that's the, sort of the comparison to, to what we have as marriage. And they yeah, they live together. They're happy. It, obviously there's a period of adju adjustment as they try and as they Get to know each other and each other's schedules and I'm sure anything like moving into this together with someone would be like um and yeah I think that's how that, that chapter ends is that yeah they slept in each other's arms that night many nights 
so we're you're sort of introduced to the problems that are currently on Uras as they sort of different societies and political entities are pulling on Shavak trying to use him and, and buy him to get his general theory of time or whatever so that they can create uh, faster than light travel um, like one of these sort of old aristocratic people there um, specifically says they he wants it so that uh, Uras can sort of um, have prestige in sort of the inter interstellar community um, and they use the t term Setian um, to refer to people from both Uras and Anaris like um, like the, both people from there are Setians which they say is a term the Terrans use because it's related to their star or the, the Terran name for their star which I thought was an, I always think is neat this is like there's sort of future humans on earth as distant aliens so they're obviously on um, SETI their star would be named SETI something what yeah anyways um, I can't think of it but I know there's a star named SETI there's Alpha Centauri, Alpha Centauri, but there's SETI. Anyways, there's there's SETIans, and um, instead of having this technology created and advanced for all humanity interstellarly, interstellarly, uh, this guy Atra wants it to be sort of benevolently handed out um, to sort of raise the prestige and whatever of this of the SETIans, which I'm sure if it wasn't. Um, Shivak's work, he wouldn't say the Setians, he'd say Urasti, or even, not even Urasti, but sort of the name of the nation state that he's from. Um, so he's sort of preaches a, a sort of a brotherhood of, of NS, NS, these two planets, but it, I think it's just utilitarian, utilitarian, I don't know, anyways. So yeah, there's that issue, that current issue, and then we're also getting the the issues that Anas, oh my word, oh, I can't I think of the name Anas Dari, the anarchists have, and sort of how their society has stagnated over its 170-year lifespan, and how, um, how individuality and individual thought are sort of now punished and looked down upon, and how, in their desire to strive to exist on a on a place that's very difficult to exist on they like they've shut out all sort of ostentatious all sort of decoration all anything that doesn't directly benefit um, humanity how that's sort of gotten out of hand and and how they're they're very utilitarian they're very sort of conservative in a way, yeah, they, they've stagnated, like, I always think of how society, it can't be too conservative, because then it falls behind, things are always changing, life, society, humanity, is always dynamic and always changing, so you can't be too conservative, or you'll, you'll fall behind, stagnate, and, 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 and die, um, but you can't be too, sort of, liberal and, and, and chaotic and, and revolutionary and constantly changing and changing and changing or there's absolutely no stability and, th and things will just fly apart um, so there's a happy medium there and it seems like the these anarchists are, are sort of getting locked in their ways and there is a sort of a not a hierarchy but there is sort of governmental sort of a commun communistic governmental uh, I can't think of the right words. Um, something forming that's... Um, it's keeping people back. Keeping people back like Tyrion and Shivek and, and this, this musician and Bidap and people who have new, fresh ideas and want to change... Not change things so much, but... Yeah. So, we're halfway through and I think we've got a good sort of basis understanding of the the, the two issues in these two societies. And um, we're starting to learn about Shivek's reason for 
coming to Uras and trying to trying to open up communication and trying to bring his two his two the the two planets together.